of the last decades. Tell us your name and where you were born. My name is Ken Gregory, and I hate to admit this, but I was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. <laughs> uh, what was your role in the city? I served on planning and zoning and then uh, served on city council for two terms and then filled an unexpired term once. What was your first impression of the city of Pflugerville? When I saw riding mowers pulled up in front of Tufts on a Saturday morning, I said, this is my place. So I, that's, that's what I realized, if I can just get on my mower and drive down to the beer hall. And um, for you and your family to move to Pflugerville, what did you, what were you looking for? Uh, we moved from San Antonio, and even back then, Austin prices were high. So we were looking for a house that we could afford based on what we sold in San Antonio for, and we found the house in Pflugerville and fell in love with it, and the rest is history. We're still here. And this was in 1981. Um, your sons went to what elementary school? They both went to Timmerman. Um, Chris, the oldest, actually went to Windermere when Windermere was a fifth grade center for that one year, I believe. Were they able to walk to school? No, they rode the bus uh, just because of 1825. Uh, okay. It was not, even though the traffic is nowhere near what it is today, it's still something that didn't really want to walk across. And that campus was actually one of the older campuses at the time. Yes. An original. Yeah, an original. I think it was at one time, it, all three schools were there, I believe. And as they uh, went through school, they uh, became musical and were involved in the band. Uh, you uh, volunteered as uh, a parent uh, probably all along their schooling. Tell us about some of those volunteer opportunities. <laughs> if you could make with that what you want. Uh, my wife, Marta, was actually it was the one who got me started. It, she started going to the booster meetings before I did and because uh, I said, I'm not going to a band booster meeting. What is that? And she got me going really enjoyed it, uh, really saw how hard the kids worked and figured they needed all the support we could give them and then I ended up serving as booster president for two terms uh, back when the, the band, the high school band went to the Rose Bowl and the Fiesta Bowl during my uh, tenure. So. That was a huge endeavor to uh, number one raise funds and then to actually sponsor the students uh, to those destinations. Tell us about some of the fundraisers that the uh, band boosters did. Well, the biggest and most consistent, uh, and I don't know if it works this way now, but we ran the concession stands at the football games. And um, the profits from that really is what supported the boosters, which in turn let us support the band. Uh, we did car raffles or a truck raffle uh, during the Rose Bowl. Uh, but those were, those were the main ones, and the kids had their own fundraisers, so they could put money in their own account from that. But the, the concessions is really where we, we made our money. We also started a 501C, um, right. yeah, three um, organizations so that we could go out and get some uh, donations to the band to help them get to the Rose Bowl that were, were tax write-off for, for some businesses. And that, that helped a little bit, but that never was as big as what we'd hoped it would have been. How large was the band? How many uh, marchers? The year they went to the Rose Bowl, it was 350. Uh, most years, it was between 300 and 325, I would say. Um, and the high school, I think at that time, was 21, 2200, and so that's a lot of kids percentage-wise were in, in the band. Um, our students have sometimes been the best ambassadors for our city because the Pflugerville name got national recognition in those three parades, the Orange Bowl, the Rose Bowl, and the Fiesta Bowl. Uh, any interesting things that may have occurred on any of those trips with the students? Well, some of them I probably shouldn't talk about, but that, that, now the kids were great. Uh, you know, you'd, you'd have a handful of chance, times where they, they might want to try to go off the reservation a little bit, but they never caused any problems on those trips. And when you've got that many kids and 
they're away like that for a lot of times the first time. Uh, I think a lot of them when they uh, they flew to the Rose Bowl, it was the first time most of them had been on a plane, and uh, it, it was it was a lot of fun. And but no no real just just the the they they met other kids and other bands and and got along great and and just uh, people at the Rose Bowl and Fiesta Bowl there was actually a marching competition that they went to and. People were blown away with the Flute Reel show because a the numbers, the, the type of show it was, it was it was different than what most others were. It was more upbeat, more jazzy, more Latin in in one case. Uh, it was a lot more fun than some of the ones that that you see now and the, what a lot of people are doing there, where it's they're doing it for the competition, not really for the fans. I think Flute Reel always tried to entertain the fans and and people really enjoyed it and they would always come up after the competition and said you guys do great and we really like that show. And, so. In order to get invited to participate in these premier parades, uh, the band had to work very hard and be a uh, superb uh, level of performance. Mm -hmm. And um, so the program was a very strong musical program. Yes, it was. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Uh, along with that, you also were involved in uh, the uh, volunteering as a soccer. Uh, parent, <laughs> yeah, uh, and that was uh, a new endeavor, really, in the city. So, tell us how it got started and uh, where you practiced. Well, it actually uh, it had started before I ever got involved in it. But uh, you played games over by uh, Flagler Elementary, where the baseball fields are. You basically there was some land over there that wasn't a baseball field at that time, and that's that's where the games were played. You practiced wherever you could find a patch of ground that was big enough to hold the, let the kids run around for a little bit. Um, so it started, it started pretty small. Um, oldest son played baseball and soccer, and then decided just to go all the way with soccer. So that's kind of when I got a little bit more involved in learning the game um, and helping with coaching. The youngest son never really wanted to play baseball so he played soccer all the time and he he got pretty good at it and uh, went up into the upper divisions and so I did help coach him all the way through and until he went up to the upper divisions which you know needed somebody that really knew what they were doing then but uh, the program now uh, well it went from Fleur Rail Elementary to that um, over there at Wells Point where we we actually built a field, which is now where that um, office warehouse complex is. So they, they bought that, and that's when it moved across the street over by um, Spring Hill Elementary. So now they understand they're running out of room there now, too. So I think uh, also it was uh, the efforts of the parents in the youth league eventually um, promoted a UIL team to form within the school. Uh, because there was not always a soccer program uh, in in yeah. the early years. Yeah, that um, that was probably a little bit before I got involved too. So I, I had nothing to do with that. All right, you uh, decided that you would uh, run for city council. Uh, what what uh, what encouraged you to do that? <laughs> the neighbors strong armed me. <laughs> um, it kind of the way I got involved in in the in the city government was Scott Winton, who was a former mayor, uh, was going by door to door. Not too long after we moved there, just trying to get people to be involved in city government, um, and that kind of led to the where the First Baptist Church, their their big building is now. We live right across the street from that, and that was an open field when we moved there. Uh, the horses were there. We used to take the boys over, and they'd feed them apples, and you know that was that was kind of neat. But there was a grocery store. The Flugers owned that land, and there was a grocery store that wanted to move in to that property. So we're going. Well, that's great. We're going to be looking at the back side of a grocery store there. Not that we didn't want it there. We just wanted some landscaping to kind of block the view. And for whatever reason, that turn the people off. They didn't want to do it and so the deal went through or went did not go through um, and eventually the church took it which is which is a good thing. They're great neighbors but that's kind of where I got involved with with that process and um, 
the Old Town Neighborhood Association, that's when they got involved um, trying to keep that from becoming an eyesore there and um, convinced me to run for council and I, and I did. I was lucky enough to win two terms. First term had competition. Second term I think I was run, running unopposed and uh, Mickey Mouse got a couple of votes and I think I got the rest. I don't remember but uh, that's that's kind of how it started. And Where were the uh, city council meetings held when you were a councilman? They are, were held over where the Chamber of Commerce is now in that little building um, on 3rd Street. And um, did you have very many, many citizens that would come uh, to uh, not too often. Every once in a while, if, if there was a hot issue, you know, a neighbor or two would show up. Uh, you know, we got cussed at a few times. And what were some of those issues at that time? Uh, businesses in the neighborhood that seemed to be the hot button. That uh, you know, Flugerville had no ordinances or anything prior to what when we came in. We were trying to write ordinances, but uh, that seemed to be the one that. Uh, and I remember a daycare center was really a good hot one in that. So they were anti-businesses moving in? Now they were, the people that were actually coming to the meetings were their neighbors and saying, hey, these are good people, you know, you can't tell them not to have a business. So they were for lending the business and we were trying to keep businesses out of the neighborhoods, which I think in the long run is the right idea, but uh, it caused a few ruffled figures because nobody before then had any restraints put on them. Um, the trail system that exists today uh, in Pflugerville, walking, hiking, jogging, biking, uh, can you give us any history on the, how the trails got started and developed? We, when the, the council I was on was at a time when things were booming, or, or this area was starting to grow and, and they the uh, largest, I guess, home builder, developer in that time was uh, Nash Phillip and Copus, NPC. So they were in here buying up the land and trying to develop it r as fast as they could. We were trying to write ordinances as fast as we could to stay ahead of them so that there was some uh, continuity of how it was going to grow. And that's when the trails, the the parkland, we we made it in the ordinance that a certain percentage of parkland had to be donated to the city from their development and or cash if 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 it couldn't if the land just didn't work out right. Uh, so that's kind of how work got started. Uh, I would say Scott Winton was who was uh, on the council and mayor. Kind of after that, he was probably the the driving force behind that. Uh, uh, that was he was a uh, urban planner. That was his degree, and and that was something he felt really strongly about. And I think it's really paid off. Uh, I think a lot of people at the time were going, "What is all this?" But I think if you look at it today and how it all connects and uh, the extent of it, uh, it all all began back then. Did the uh, how was all of the land acquired? It, was it donations from the original landowners or from uh, as developers came in and had to designate the, from the developers? Um, now, if the original wanted to, that would be great, but, uh, but for them to develop, that was part of the, the requirements that they did donate that land. Uh, what other city activities maybe were your children involved in during the summer? Um, well, as they got older, they would go to fun camp uh, just for fun. And, uh, and then actually when they got older from that, they became counselors at fun camp. So uh, that... Um, um, the library uh, has had several locations and uh, tell us your observations as the library was being built at its present location. <laughs> uh, I thought back to where it was when it was in that little building over on 3rd Street and to see that building going up was just amazing and uh, and I will have to give my wife credit on that too because she was on the library board and a member of the Friends of the Library and she was really, really adamant about having a, a good library in Pflugerville. And when it went up and I saw it, I said, whoa, this city's changing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, are there any other uh, areas that you uh, volunteered or uh, observations of, of your time living in Pflugerville, things that have changed? 
Well, and, and I'll come back to that, but before that, before we leave the city council, I think there's one other thing that that, that council did that was really paid off for the city in the long run was the um, the sewer plant in Gatlinburg, uh, or not Gatlinburg, the new one down by the, the county park. Uh, NPC, to take care of the houses they had to build, you know, we did not have the capability of taking care of the, uh, the wastewater. So they basically built that plant, but there was provisions in there that if they ever stopped giving us the tap fees, and, and I, I can't remember the whole, um, whole way it went down, but we ended up getting that plant because they, they basically went out of business and defaulted on it. So the plant came to Pflugerville and we paid very, very, very little for it. So that, I thought that was a, a really good foresight on our, and actually I think Clarence Bowles was the, probably the person behind that, so. Well, and uh, that was vital infrastructure for the city mm -hmm. uh, and its growth over the decades. And uh, that plant has been, I think, upgraded the capacity enlarged so mm -hmm. that it could accommodate right. uh, new subdivisions and developments as they come online. Right. Okay. Uh, but as far as what I remember about Pflugerville, when we first moved here, um, you know, it was country. <laughs> Uh, and I really, really liked that. We, uh, my wife was pregnant when we moved here, so, you know, I wanted to go check out Marshalls and Tufts, which were the local taverns, and so we sat out on a bench in front of Marshalls one night, and she was having coke, so don't everybody worry about that. And, but we, we watched traffic for probably two hours, and, and I think the police chief came by about three times and maybe two other cars the whole time we we're sitting out there. So that that was really a nice, kind of an old peaceful town at that time. And uh, yeah, I miss it, but same time, it's it's a, you know, you got to keep moving. And uh, Well, and uh, I assume then maybe when you came to town, had uh, Pecan Street been widened at that time? No. It was still a two-lane yeah, that was Yeah, well, that was also something we did on the council when it was two lanes. We wanted to go to five, but we couldn't get the right of way without it just the cost was too high. So we could have done four, but all the traffic people said four is no better than two because you still need that turn lane. So we just went to three. And uh, so you nearly went from storefront to storefront on each side. In the yeah, and that's why we didn't. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, it just wasn't going to work. But. That, that would have been optimal. To um, what were some of the businesses other than, uh, you said Tufts and Marshalls? Marshalls, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that, that were in town at the time that you might have visited? Uh, the main one would probably be Jim's Food Mart. And uh, that little, over there by Timmerman Elementary, I believe it's a BMX bicycle shop now. But there, there for a while, that was really it in, in town as far as if you needed just something quick. But they had great sandwiches. So that, that's what you'd always go over there to Jim's and get a sandwich, and uh, so that was. There weren't that many eating places. No, Spring Hill, uh, which when we moved here was called Old Spanish Trails, and it was a Mexican restaurant then. And that was pretty much it. <laughs> um, okay, um, I, what do you see? Uh, uh, as a citizen, a farmer council person, as uh, what the direction Pflugerville might be going in the next um, two, five, ten years? <laughs> I, think, I think they're going in a good direction. Uh, you know, we couldn't survive on just being a bedroom community forever, and uh, I think with the toll roads opening up, and of course they just announced that, that new project up by the Hawaiian Falls, I think this council has been in the last couple I guess councils have been really really good about trying to be proactive and bringing in business you know it's a double-edged sword and you know the more traffic you know but at the same time you can't survive staying still or going backwards and uh, back to the um, the parks uh, were the when did the swimming pool come along um, was that before your time? No, that was, I was on then. Uh, I couldn't tell you the year, but yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. 
So that was that was a big amenity. That was a big amenity, amenity, and uh, I think people loved it and still love it. Probably probably could use another one just like it. <laughs> um, you also belong to the Sertoma Club. Mm -hmm. That was a, uh, a civic club. Tell us a little bit about its uh, purpose and. Uh, well, I think most people know the Lions Club, and the Lions Club deals with eye, eyes, eyeglasses. That's kind of their main thing. Sertoma, which is short for Service to Mankind, it was more of a taking kids with hearing disabilities and helping them. Uh, so that's what we raised money for. Um, our biggest fundraisers, well, I guess there were two. One was we used to sell Christmas trees, um, and that was before people like HEB and Home Depot and all that started doing them, so that kind of cut into that. Uh, and then at Deutschenfest, we had one of the beer booths, and so <laughs> that was a lot of fun and a lot of money. <laughs> So what did you, what were, did your proceeds uh, go far? Hearing aids uh, for some kids, for, uh, computer software that helped them learn to, uh, to listen and work. Um, and then, and we have disbanded, or the Satoma Club in Pflugerville disbanded, but we left our proceeds with the school district as kind of a perpetual annuity so that they could use the money they earned off of that account to help the kids and, and with the same, with the stipulations of going to hearing. Uh, you were talking about Deutschenfest. Uh, you've been here several decades, so what, <laughs> talk about how the Deutschenfest may have been and is uh, that you've been involved it, with. It, when we first moved here, it was go spend the day with your neighbors, uh, catch up on old friends, uh, it wasn't that big, you know, it was fun, but it wasn't that big. Uh, it's changed a lot. I mean, it's now people come from Austin. Uh, it's a major festival and uh, with the entertainment that people come to see now, it's, it's just a lot different. I mean, it's still fun. We go and enjoy it, but you know, it's, it's not just sitting down and talking to your neighbors like it used to be. And uh, vi uh, vendors from out of town come mm -hmm. and uh, with artwork and uh, yeah. artistic, uh, things that have been made, et cetera. Yeah, and that, it, it's a lot bigger now. It, it, that few people used to come back at the, in the long, you know, 20 years ago, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a whole different game now, and it's good, it's just different. Is there anything else you would like to see the city uh, have that, that would <laughs> be? Uh, you know, I, it, and my wife always said, you know, if she waits long enough, Pflugerville will get all the stores she needs. She won't have to go to Austin, and we're pretty well there right now. Um, I think that development, the new development with more restaurants, hotels, living, I think, I think alternate living is something that Pflugerville should be looking at, uh, whether it's for seniors or, or young people, that you don't have to move from Pflugerville if you don't want to. Um, so I think a little bit of that needs to happen, but uh, I think we're on the right track. And Any town characters that uh, come to mind? <laughs> uh, I, I don't know if I'd call him a character, but I think somebody that, that did a lot, probably more than people ever would realize is Clarence Bowles. Um, he was city manager for years, and, um, and I guess even before there was even a council and city manager government, he was instrumental in, in, in taking care of Pflugerville and, and the utilities and things like that. Um, a character would be one of the old mayors called Haywood Ware. Uh, he could, he, I think he had the greatest intentions for Pflugerville, but boy, he could get excited <laughs> and just kind of go off on a tangent and everybody be stepping back and what, what, where's this going? Uh, but. Nah, just people, are just good people. And uh, uh, what about the Chamber of Commerce? Uh, you may not have been a member, but what role did the Chamber play uh, in the city? You know, I've no, I'm not a member, and I've really never been that closely connected to them. They started getting um, 
I guess back in the mid to late 80s, they started kind of becoming a, a factor, and, and I think they've done a good job. And I think between them and that new uh, development corporation that uh, that's out there now, uh, uh, they've grown a lot. And um, Even with the growth and population of this city, we've seen some of the local uh, businesses grow, and one would be the green and growing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's It's been there a long time. Was it there when you came? It was there. Um, used to be peacocks running around over there, and they'd come in our yard sometimes too. So yeah, <laughs> haven't seen those in a while. Uh, now that's and it's a great nursery. Uh, you can count on getting good plants there. You know, you some go to some of these other the big box places sometimes, and you're just going to get what they get. But uh, green and growing, make sure that they bring in stuff that's right for this area. And, and it's, it's just nice to go walk around where you, Tim won't like to say this, but whether you buy anything or not, it's a nice place to go walk around. Um, when the uh, Baptist Church came in the, uh, probably in the late 70s, uh, and of course it's expanded, mm -hmm. and as you mentioned, you were glad to see it uh, come in as a neighbor. Um, it is one of the biggest churches now in the, in the city. Does the... Uh, is, is there, does a bell ring? No. no, no bells. So it doesn't make any noise? No, it doesn't make any noise. <laughs> okay, okay. We'll, we'll hear the Methodist bells and the Lutheran bells, but we don't hear any Baptist bells. <laughs> okay, is there anything else you would like to add? Well, I think, um, no, I think, uh, I think everything is, I think we've covered it. Okay, well, very good. Well, we appreciate your sharing your story mm -hmm. with us. Well, thanks for the invitation. Yeah. I look forward to seeing it. Do you have anything else, Pam?